The IFOS light spectrometer brings the science of light to everyone. At the back of the tubular housing is a webcam and a diffraction grating mounted on a specially designed frame. Higher up there's an anti-glare diaphragm and at the front there's a slit frame where slit plates can be mounted. All 3D printed in black. It's a light spectrometer you connect to your PC. It analyzes infrared, ultraviolet and visible light through an easy graphical user interface. It opens up a world of exploration for all kinds of sources of light. Let's take a few minutes and explore a few. So it's December um, and I'm in the UK and this is a view of the sky from my office window um, captured spectrographically. Um, you can see from the um, image from the webcam that I've got a really nice spectrum there. I'm using the one millimeter slit plate which gives me plenty of light and I'm taking a very thin slice through the image to get the best resolution I can which is a luxury I can afford because um, there's plenty of light there. And this is the overall spectrum. Um, ultraviolet out here, infrared down here. Um, this is um, an atmospheric absorption line showing around 750 nanometers and it's due to water in the atmosphere. I think this one's oxygen. Um, here's another absorption. If we put the uh, dips on we can see the dips, so this dip is at 692 nanometers, 720 nanometers and 756. It's the 756 which is the oxygen. I want to see if the um, Corotherm laminated polycarbonate construction material I've got for a possible greenhouse um, is going to significantly impact the spectrum of light coming from the sky. So today um, it's very dull and overcast and windy and miserable and um, so the first thing I'm going to do is try and take out this statistical noise here by putting um, let's say 300 in there. This is averaging 300 samples uh, which is why the curves are bouncing around less and the uh, jagged edges have gone. It's an averaging process, so it's less responsive, more of an overall picture. I need to turn the white balance off, which you can do using this little um, video input control panel here. So that's fairly stable. I'll capture that image. And now I'll put the corotherm in front of the spectrometer and I'll take another image and I can compare those two to see what the difference is and I can repeat the operation to make sure that it's a consistent process. Let me just explain the setup here. I've got the um, spectrometer sitting on a small tripod pointed directly at my PC monitor and it's currently recording the spectrum of what it can see and then in addition to that I've got a an image editing program which I'm going to place so that its color area is directly in the path of the spectrometer like this. So we're looking on this spectrum here at what the spectrometer can see here and I'm able to change the color of what the spectrometer can see by flood filling in the current color of the ink like this. So we've got a red image um, here, a solid red image and it's no surprise that the spectrometer shows red in the picture. When we show white, it tells us the essence of the display device and the, what the, how the monitor works. It's got three color sources, one at 630 nanometers, one at 530, and one at 450 nanometers. And these are the only three colors it can make. So when it needs to mix white, it does it like this. 
let's go to um, a greeny blue and now we're seeing different mixtures and now the um, the party piece really I don't know if you've heard about yellow but there's no such color as yellow coming from most PC monitors you think that's yellow it's not yellow it's a mixture of green and red and again the same frequencies they're the only frequencies the only colors the monitor can make so pretty fascinating can spend hours doing this. Although most of the street lights have been replaced, there are some sodium ones. I'm focused on it with a spectroscope, which was quite tricky, and I realise I need a sighting scope. But look, looky, looky, looky. But well, that's the sodium spectrum. Well, those are just some of the things you can do with your iPhos. But there are many, many more, and here are some ideas. You can analyze the chemical makeup of um, elements and compounds by burning them in flames and looking at the spectra they give off. By shining a white light source through a substance and looking at the light that comes out the other side, you can also determine the chemical characteristics of the substance. I'm wondering if it's possible to use this instrument uh, with a suitable star tracking system to collect the spectra from stars. Endless educational fun. The sales page will let you know all you need to know about how to purchase your own iPhos. Click the card or the link in the description and that will take you straight there.